to trick yourself, add rewards, gamify it, and then over time, you won't need to anymore. Hey internet, and welcome to yet another video. This one's gonna be a bit different. It's much less structured than my videos usually are. I'm trying out a different camera angle and kind of setup here. If you're new here, welcome. I'm currently a third year university student, and personally, I found that I wanted to read a lot more, and I just wasn't doing it. And the past few months, I've been getting much better at my reading habit. I'll get into what I replaced reading in a little bit, talk about my insights on it as a student of psychology. Uh, but yeah, I'll have timestamps on the on the, the video bar below if you're curious about anything specific. But uh, without further ado, I was such a big reader as a kid. And so over the past several years, when I just started reading less and less, it really surprised me. And I've been giving a lot of thought about a lot of things recently. And reading as a habit is one of them. I have all these books on my bookshelf that I've wanted to read. And I, I always get more books, as I'm sure many people can relate with. But then we just don't get around to reading them. Now, as a kid, all the books I read were Magic's Treehouse, uh, I never read Harry Potter, unfortunately, but Ranger's Apprentice, and all these different young adult fiction books, and those were very, very gripping. I think a lot of young adult fiction books I enjoyed, I'd pick up today and be like, eh, not so much. But reading fiction is super, it's important. Uh, it's, it's good to keep your imagination alive. Everything you read doesn't have to be productive, right? And I kind of got myself into that mindset. So if you're in that mindset, try to, try to break out of it. You know, everything in moderation. But that's not the main point here. I just wanted to say that I'm sure there are a lot of people who can relate with the fact that when they were kids, they read a lot. And now, well, we don't. And it's largely due to the culture we live in today. So this video came about when I was reading a book slash really long medium article that he calls a book by Seth Godin called Stop Stealing Dreams. And he has this quote, we invest thousands of hours exposing millions of students to fiction and literature, but end up training most of them to never again read for fun. One study found that 58% of all Americans never read for pleasure after they graduate from school. As soon as we associate reading a book with taking a test, we've missed the point. This launched me into writing down the notes for the video that you're watching now. Really quickly, I wanted to explain the part where he says, as soon as we associate reading a book with taking a test, we've missed the point. An oversimplification of this is talking about reward and anticipated reward. When we read a book when we're a kid, Harry Potter, Ranger's Apprentice, Magic Treehouse, we read because we love it. It gets our imaginations going as children. Today, when I read a book, um, you know, How to Change Your Mind or Naked Economics, which are both books I've started but haven't finished. When we read those kinds of books, the motivation might not be, oh, our imagination is going wild. Because in school, the expected reward, and I use reward in a more literal psychological sense, not a, here's $100 for this thing you did. The expected reward is doing well in a test. So we read a chapter of a book or a few chapters of a book or some pages just so that we can prepare for a bunch of questions on an exam. Long story short, you get stressed about a grade. So your body says, okay, I really need to read this article, this chapter for that quiz tomorrow. So you read it and your motivation for getting through it, whether you be focused or not, is for this quiz that I have tomorrow. So this is the expected reward. We are expecting that if we do the reading, we get a good grade. When we think, oh, I'm going to get a good grade because I'm reading this, that makes us feel better than when we actually receive that good grade. The second thing is that you are reading because of the test. And subconsciously, when you're reading, your brain says this is for the test. So when we sit down to read a book like Sapiens or How to Change Your Mind, it may not be conscious, but we're thinking there's no test. I don't need to read this. That being said, uh, again, oversimplify. This isn't a research back thing. This video is a rant. Reading can be fixed. This habit can be brought back in again. But that's just exactly what it is. It is a habit. And with habits comes ways to build this back up. If you want to make a habit of waking up every morning at 645, as I did a couple of weeks ago, it was really hard for like the first week and a half. And I had to force myself. I had to have a reason to be committed to that. But now it's pretty easy. Now my body's adjusted to it. It's, it's less of a choice and more of a habit. Reading is the same way. I think a lot of people have this perception that if I start a book, I have to finish a book. I know I have that perception, but that's not true. When you read, you should start building up consistency, not volume. What happened with me is that I just started off too big. I didn't start small. I didn't start consistently. I said, I'm going to read five books a month and we're good. But it just didn't work. I didn't define my goal clearly. The thing is, I my reading habit was so far gone. I was reading one book like every two months, maybe. And I just didn't get used to sitting down and reading. When you want to get your reading habit back on track, start with consistency, not length. Mark Manson posted this picture on Instagram a couple of days ago or so. And it said, here's how to get back to reading. Step one, and I'm paraphrasing, read a chapter of the book. And if you 
like it, keep reading. If you don't like it, put the book down, find another book, and repeat. If you start a book and you don't like it, you don't have to finish it. That's just a general rule. In school, you didn't like a book, you have to read it for the assignment, for the quiz. That's not true in reality. If there's this national best-selling book called Sapiens that blows my mind, but you pick it up and you're like, dude, who cares? Then put it away. Find another book. Don't be afraid to put a book down. And in terms of consistency, don't try and set to set out to finish an entire book in a week. Maybe farther down the line, that can be a goal, but just read 10 pages today. Just read one page today. Put aside 15 minutes between classes at night. Just 15 minutes of reading however far you get. If you want to keep reading, great. If you don't, put the book down. Come back another time. As time goes on, you can increase the amount of time you spend reading. But again, it's another habit. You want to start small and you want to be consistent. If you can pair it with something else, that's also another great way to do it. So for example, if you don't want to schedule in, you know, okay, from four to 4.15, I'm going to read every day. Say after lunch, I'm going to read for 10 minutes. Pair it with something you already do. It becomes less of a decision when you're able to do this. There's no wake up. Okay, do I have to go on a run before class, after class? You've already made the decision. You've already decided to run after you wake up. You've already decided to read after you finish lunch. You can also set up a small reward for yourself. If you've read every single day this week or every time you finish a chapter, just something like that, right? And your reward does not always have to be physical. I'm gonna talk about non-physical rewards in terms of gamification in just a little bit. But first, I also wanna talk about external settings. If someone asked me today, hey, What's one of the biggest things that has changed your academic career, your productivity lifestyle? I would say social accountability. And I don't just mean contacting a friend and telling them what you did at the end of the day, but I mean involving yourself in an entire community that has the same outlook as you do on different things. If you're on Discord, for example, and like me, I was in 10 or 15 different servers, they were all related to gaming things that I rarely ever check. And then I joined one productivity server, then I joined a few accountability servers, and surrounding myself with those people has been super helpful in terms of getting me back on track. Who you surround yourself with defines a little bit of who you are. So do that with reading too. There might be a lot of stigma around having a book group, but I would recommend it. Get together a few friends and push each other to read. And it's kind of tough when you have to push everyone to read like this, especially if you're the only one in the group saying, hey guys, let's read more. Find something online on Goodreads, which I'll talk about more in just a minute on Discord. There are so many productivity servers who, that have dedicated sections to book groups. Surrounding yourself with like-minded people with the same goal, especially the same book and same reading goal can be super, super beneficial and just make the whole process a lot easier. Last before I get into the gamification of all this, one of the things that made the most difference for me, specifically for reading, is find what reading can replace. I was someone who spent a lot of time on YouTube and Netflix, and I still am, I, I would say I still am, but I installed Cold Turkey and I got really serious about blocking my times on it. I deleted all the recommendation feeds from Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. I made a rule that if I'm watching Netflix, it has to be something from my list already. And if you wanna make rules like that for yourself, you can. What I tried before that, and it didn't work for me, and I think a lot of people have the willpower to do this, I didn't. I had to turn off recommendations because the algorithms were too strong. But find something that reading can replace, like watching YouTube videos. If you wake up and the first thing you do in the morning is watch a YouTube video and then you click on another recommended video and you just end up watching a bunch of videos or later on in the day you say, oh, I'll just watch one episode of Lucifer and then you find yourself three episodes in. The point is if you're going on Netflix or YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, try and take a moment of conscious intervention. Say, why am I doing this? Whether or not it's because you have free time or because you're further procrastinating something, try and read instead. And just read 10 pages, then go on Instagram. Read a chapter, then go to Netflix. In blocking all my recommendeds, I first noticed that I am not at the mercy of an algorithm, that everything I search up is intentional. I am intentionally looking for someone's tweets. I am intentionally looking for YouTube content on a topic or from a person. Now that I could talk about for hours on end, if we're being honest, but my point stands as use that time for reading. If you really wanna read, make the time for it. A lot of people say, oh, I don't have time to read. The excuse of I don't have time is uh, something I kind of go off on sometimes. But my point is, if you find yourself saying you don't have time to read, check yourself. Check how much time you're spending on social media. Check how much time you're spending on YouTube or Netflix or doing things that just generally aren't productive. I'm not saying don't watch YouTube or don't watch Netflix. I think having leisure time and chill time is good. But if you do want to read and your excuse is that you don't have time, you may be lying to yourself. Lastly, I wanted to talk about gamification of reading to help your reading habits be consistent. I am going to massively oversimplify gamification here. You could talk about the octalysis design, you could talk about game theory in a sense and decision making, but we're gonna talk about very simple gamification. The idea here is that if you were playing a video game and someone said, okay, you are Johnny, 
and you are in a house and you are in front of a computer or you are in your room, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna sit there and play the game and uh, have your character sit in front of the TV for hours on end? Doesn't sound like much fun. Not to say that watching your character read for hours on end would also be exciting, but the rules of the game would state that if you watched YouTube or Netflix, you didn't gain any experience, you didn't level up. But when you read every 10 minutes that your character reads, he levels up. Every chapter gets some reward. Every book that is finished gets a level up. Those are these very simplified rules that I want to apply to reality here. Three very basic principles of reward that is implemented over time based on progress that you have performed. There are two ways that I propose you might try this out. If you really wanna make reading a consistent habit and you wanna do the simplest thing right now, pause the video and go sign up for a Goodreads account. I'll give you five seconds. People of uh, Stardew water. Valley, lend me your energy. <laughs> you may never look at this account again, but if you did it, you've done something that takes maybe 30 seconds, it's a start. I signed up for Goodreads a while ago because it was part of a Discord community I was on, but I started using it back at the start of the year when I set my goal of 60 books. Stopped using it for several months because I didn't read very consistently for several months. And last month I was like, you know what? We're gonna go for it. I'm gonna see if I can still hit 60 books this, this year. There are a few great aspects of Goodreads. First of all, you get to look back on your progress. If you think, oh man, I really haven't read that much this year. And you look back and you've read 16 books so far versus the year before where you read eight books or zero books, then that's really good progress. Goodreads logs all that throughout the year. Looking at these aspects, you can record your progress over time. Goodreads, when you add a book, you can then mark it as currently reading, and then you can finish the book. And this works you towards another goal in the end. And just marking a book as completed can be really satisfying. Not just closed and done with the last chapter, but you've gone on and you've posted your progress publicly, if you'd like, about finishing a book. And you can look back at all the books that you finished. It's just a pleasant feeling. If you're ever wondering what constitutes as a book, is it, you know, this 400 page book about the science of psychedelics? Is it this, I don't know, book about Aboriginal art that I needed for a class? Is this short story, Under the Garden by Graham Greene? Is that a book? I say if it's on Goodreads, it's a book. Obviously that's not the actual definition of a book. Unfortunately, books don't have recommendation algorithms like YouTube or Netflix. If you want to count it as a book, it's a book. Anyway, I went off on a bit of a tangent there. Ebooks as well, 20, 25 page ebooks from like Trello or companies like that, super informational. They're books. For real gamification now, there's a website called Habitica. It used to be called Habit RPG, where essentially you create a character and you level up by completing tasks, do lists, dailies. Now on Habitica, there are guilds. There are groups of people who focus on art tasks and you can have those guilds post challenges and you can participate in sketch a day or stuff like that. When I was using Habitica intensely, I came across a guild called Gamified Reading. Gamified Reading kind of takes everything I've been ranting about in this video and ties it up with a nice bow. First of all, it's gamified to a great extent and Habitica's literally a game. Gamification can be things as simple as progress bars to literal RPGs based on productivity. The Gamified Reading Guild is just that. It's a guild. Everyone who has joined that guild is working towards the same goal of reading more books. Some people are reading towards less books. Sometimes people read to procrastinate. Honestly, that's sort of where I'm going. It's really weird, but I'd rather do that than get stuck in a YouTube algorithm loop. And the challenges that the Gamified Reading Guild posts are really well designed. Every single day, there's different tasks and different bosses. And so when you read a chapter of the book, you can do damage towards a boss. If you don't meet your reading goal today, hit the subtraction button and the boss actually regains health and gains power when it attacks the entire guild or something like that. Of the, the Gamified Reading Habitica built, <sighs> definitely recommend checking out the Gamified Reading Guild if you're in Habitica. The owner of the guild, uh, Ben, I was able to reach out to him, has actually written some articles kind of on this topic. So I'll make sure to include those in the description description as well and are much more concise than this ranting video of mine. So that's kind of it. All in all, reading is a leisure thing, but it can also be an educational thing. Now with school and this whole conditioning thing that I was talking about at the start of this video, when we read, we're expected to get a grade. We're expected to retain information. Fiction is just as valid a material of reading as is nonfiction. I love philosophy, but at the Existentialist Cafe is taking me a really long time to get through. So I put it down and started reading Ghostwriters of Ordebeck. It's just really good. It was like a mystery novel thing. Unfortunately, after I put it into my Goodreads account, I realized it was the ninth in the series of the main character. And uh, a book called Flowers for Algernon made me cry at the end. And it's fiction. What I'm trying to say is just read for fun. Read for leisure. It's no longer tied to a grade. To trick yourself, add rewards, gamify it, and then over time, you won't need to anymore. This video 
It's just insights that work for me that I hope can have some value for you. That's the main goal of this is if you heard one thing in this video that was like, oh yeah, I should try Habitica again, then fantastic. If you're looking for something to uh, read every Monday and Friday, that's super short, won't take you more than two minutes, sign up for my newsletter. It's something I started with a group of friends uh, that I met in a program I did over the summer. We're just kind of passing down our stories. It's called The Torch. You can find a link to that in the description down below. I'm super interested in habit formation and I think reading is one of the habits that a lot of people say, I want to do more of this, but I don't have the time. Time is, in a lot of ways, time is a choice. And if you say, yeah, you don't have time for reading, look at your phone. See how much time you spent on social media today. Look back on this video and see how much time you spent watching it. Anyway, that's all for today. If you did enjoy it, leave a like down below or hit subscribe. If you have a conflicting opinion, I'd love to hear your comments. But without further ado, the camera's about to die. Thanks again so much for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. Keep reading. Peace out.